Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems. It's nice having you in class again today, how have you been? On today's tutorial, we are going to look at the having sign formula, which helps us to determine the distance between two geodetic points, right? Good now. We all know that the earth is not flat and then um, it is not also completely round, right? Good. So it is more of an ellipse than it is not. So um, when you have um, two points that are very far apart each other, it will not be convenient to see them as though they are on a straight line because no, they are not. So um, for you to determine the distance between those two points, then this is one of the formula you can use. Now the having sign formula can calculate the grid circle distance between two points on the surface of a sphere, which is like what the earth, right? Good given their latitude and um, longitude. It accounts for the Earth's curvature and is widely used for distance calculations in navigation, geography and mapping. Now, um, we have the formula. The formula is split into three. The last one that calculates the distance is radius multiplied by C, right? Good. So before we get to the C, we have what um, C to be two times arctangent of um, square root of a comma square root of one minus a and now what is our a our a is now sine square the latitude of b minus the latitude of a divided by two plus the cos of what latitude a times the cos of latitude b then times the sine square of what the longitude of b minus the longitude of a so this is actually a long formula and it is very interesting to what to apply so the first thing is that when you have your coordinates those your latitude and your longitude you need to convert them to what to radians because they will definitely be in degrees for you to be able to use them what in the formula right good so we have a few notes but um, we just need to scroll down to the example we have now from the example we have here they said calculate the distance between these two points and then let the radius of the earth be what 6371 kilometer so we have point a to be this latitude and longitude then we have um, point b to be this latitude and this longitude right good so according to the procedure the first step is to convert your degree minute and seconds to decimal degrees so that you can easily use it in the formula so for you to have it in decimal degrees, you can just go about calculating 5 plus 4 divided by 60 plus um, 11.85 divided by 3600. Or you can just have um, 5 degrees, 4 minutes, and then um, 11.85 seconds on your calculator, right? Good. When you have the answer displayed, you click on degree minute and seconds. It automatically converts it to, uh, to decimal degrees. So instead of going through the stress of 5 plus 4 over 60 plus 11.85 over 3600, you can just have them written like this and then convert it to decimal degrees by using what this um, degree minute and seconds um, button on your calculator. Right? Good. So that was how we used to convert the latitude and the longitude that are in degree minute and seconds to, uh, to decimal degrees. Then the next part of the formula is to, uh, to convert your decimal degrees to radians. Now, for you to also use the formula, your angles must be in radians, not in degrees, right? Good. So the relationship between an angle in radians and an angle in degrees is that the angle in radians is equal to the angle in degrees multiplied by what? Pi over 180, right? Good. So we now say this then implies that we have the degrees multiplied by this value. So this value that you can see here is actually pi over 180. So how do we get that value? It's simply we have shift pi divided by what? 180. So you now see what this value, right? Good. 0 0.017. So instead of you to always have this and um, pi over 180, you can just store this value on your calculator. Let's just store it as what a. Maybe we might need it very soon. So we have stored the value of m. Um, this um, pi over 180 as a on the calculator so that we can easily recall so instead of having it as pi over 180 always you can use that um, value as a substitute right good so the next thing is for us to now convert all those values that we have in decimal degrees for our latitude and longitude of points a and then points b to to the equivalent radians right good so we are going to do for the first one now let's come back again we have five 
degrees, four minutes. You have it there. Click on the give me 10 seconds again. It gives you the value in what in decimal degrees. So remember that we told you that to convert from degree minute and seconds to decimal degrees, which we have done, and then from the decimal degrees to radians, you multiply by what pi over 180. And then we have stored pi over 180 as a value on our calculator as what a. So if we say this value multiplied by a, whatever value that we are going to have will be what the radiance equivalent, right? Good. So if you confirm now, if you check, you can now see that we have 0 0.08848. So that is the equivalent of the latitude of point A in radians, right? Good. So this is how you duplicate down, convert the value in degree and seconds to decimal degrees, and then multiply that value in decimal degrees by what? Pi over 180. And then we have done right by storing pi over 180 as what? A on our calculator. So you just have to multiply that value by A to get the corresponding value in what? In radians, right? Good. So when you do that, you have um, um, successfully done step two. Now, step three is to apply the formula. Now, the formula um, contains different parts. If we come up to, good, if you come up to the formula, you can see the latitude of B minus the latitude of A divided by 2. And then you can also see what the longitude of B minus the longitude of A divided by 2, right? Good. So that is what we meant by the differences. So for us to easily use the formula, we now have to compute the differences. So if you want to compute the difference for the latitude, you extract the value for what latitude B, which is 0 0.022095 minus that of A, which is what 0 0.08 all in radians. So by the time you find their difference, you have what this value in radians. Similarly, if you do that for what the longitude, which is longitude B, which is what this value here, 0 0.1, this value 0 0.1 um, minus this other value here, 0 0.12, right? Good. So by the time you find the difference between these two values, you have what the equivalent in radians. So we have successfully done what computed the differences that we have what in the formula. So having done that, we now come back to what using this formula. So for A, which says sine square, the difference between the latitude divided by 2 plus the cos of what um, latitude A times the cos of latitude B times the sine square of what longitude B minus longitude A divided by 2. So what we simply need to do is to impute what is to impute the result from what this difference that we have here, right? Good. So for the first one, we have 0 0.1324. So we have the 0 0.1324 here, right? Good. Divided by 2. That is divided by 2. Then plus cos latitude a so what do we have as latitude a if you scroll up again you are going to see the radian value of one latitude a so you have the radian value here you copy it and then you impute it here multiplied by what cos latitude b you do similar stuff then multiply by finally the difference divided by two so the difference for the um, longitude is what 0 0.02 then you still have one divided by two. So going further, remember we have a division in this bracket. So we have to simplify the division first. So when you simplify the division, you have something like this. And then you still go on with this value. You still repeat this value. And then you also have a division in this other bracket, right? Good. So you also simplify the division. So you have this. So we now have some linear expressions that have trigonometric functions. Now we have told you some other time that when you have sine square a value, which is according to what we have in this first term item here it simply means let's say sine square 2 right good let's assume that this value we have here is 2 so it will now be sine 2 multiplied by sine 2 right good so that will give you sine square 2 if you have what sine square 10 it will be sine 10 multiplied by what sine 10 so it will now be this value you have the sine of this value multiplied by what the sine of this value so you would have what this value so you now come again to do the cos of what this value 
you to return this you do the cost of this value it will return this and then similarly as you have done for the first entity you come to this fourth one sine square this value simply means sign of this value multiplied by what sign of this value so it will give you this when you do the operation with all of these you know we have multiplication at this other part and then we also have addition at this other part so it simply means that you have to do what the multiplication first right good according to board mass so when you do this multiplied by this multiplied by this you are going to have what this value here please ensure you confirm these values on your calculator you need a calculator by you and then in genetic calculations your um, approximation should not be to two or three decimal places you should you need them up to maybe nine ten as the case may be right but so it needs to be exhaustively um stated so we have um, the latter parts to be this first item plus all of the products that you've gotten or plus the product you've gotten from this this and this so by the time you add these two together your a becomes 0 0.04578384 um, right good so that becomes the value of your a now to compute c we now say c is equal to 2 multiplied by the arctangent of what the square root of a arctangent 2 of the square root of a comma the square root of 1 minus a so this is an argument of this arctangent function right good so um on our calculator we are still going to show you how to go about this particular calculation so the first thing is to find the square root of a so we have our a to be so if we store that in a so that we can easily recall so we have what our value of a which we have gotten here stored here right since the value of a has been stored we now come to this our operations the first one is the square root of a so we have square root of alpha a we have 0 0.066 then the next one is what the square root of 1 minus a right good so we have 1 minus that value so you have 0 0.9 so this is where the operation comes in and it gets a bit interesting so when you have square root of a comma the square root of 1 minus a in this um, particular arctangent function it simply means you divide right good it simply means you divide so it will not be if we want to open a bracket it will not be square root of a which is the square root of alpha a we close the brackets twice then divided by we open the second bracket where we now have the square root of one minus a that is as we are doing it on the calculator right good so we close the bracket twice so we click on equal to when you click on equal to it will return what this value right so this simply means that we now have what square root of a divided by square root of what one minus a which is what this value right then the next part of the function says what arctangent 2 into the whole of that expression so the next um, part of the expression is now what the arctangent 2 so it simply means that um, shift tan which is what tan inverse right good of that answer we've gotten we click on equal to it will give us this right good now the caveat is that this value that is returned is in degrees so we still need to what to convert it to what to radians right good oh, we have um, replaced our pi over 180 by um, the value of a so we can simply say this value answer multiplied by we open a bracket and then we put pi divided by 180 the reason why we are opening a bracket we want the calculator to know that the whole of this um, other part of the multiplication are together so if we click on equal to it returns what the value of what we have calculated in what in radians please anywhere you missed it pause the video rewind and then you would get it right good so the answer we got here is in degrees so we need to convert it to radians by multiplying it by what pi over 180 right good so having done that we now come to 
the final part of the formula which says we should multiply it by what two what we are doing is that we broke down this formula into bits and bytes right good so now we have square root of a we have square root of one minus a we have um, square root of a comma square root of one minus a we now have what the act tangent two of what the square so you can understand the process we do not impute everything directly on the calculator so you see process so that you know how the answers would what will be displayed right good so the final part will now be to multiply what by two right good which is this last value which is this last value so we multiply by two and then we have what this whatever value we have now is in what is in radians right good so we have point um one three five now the last part is to compute our d remember we told you from the beginning that the formula is arrow multiplied by c right good so for you to get c you go to the second stage and then in the second stage you are having a for you to also get a you come to the first stage at least everything that is um, in this first stage we have them which is what the latitude and the longitude of our points right good so we are now on d which is what the actual distance using this um having sign formula so it will now be what arrow multiplied by c so if we scroll down to where we are coming from it will now be this c we've gotten which is um this multiplied by the arrow we are using which is what 6371 right so we have about um 862.83 or 84 and then we have it runs is 2.78 so sometimes approximation can cumulatively change the values of your answer but one thing is that if you follow the steps through your answers should not be so far apart right good so because of a few approximations we have um, differences in our um, decimal but the whole number is the same so we believe we have shown you please any part of the video where you missed it you can always pause rewind so that um, you would get um, a better part we have shown you the process on how to use the seven sign formula to um, calculate the distance between two geodetic points right good so um we are going to see you on the next tutorial and sure you keep staying safe and have a very good time bye